All right, folks. Now, I want to warn you that if you're going to uh, identify, if you're going to watch this video to try and identify relative extrema and intervals of increase and decrease of a function, you have to know how to create a sign chart because that's one of the things that I'm going to show you how to do in this, fun or in this video is how to find the relative extrema and the intervals of increase and decrease of any function using a sign chart. And here's what I want to do. First, I want to define what is a relative extrema, then what is an interval of increase, then what is an interval of decrease, and then I'll show you how to identify these things in a function. Okay? A relative extrema is a turnaround point. A, let's call it a turnaround point on a graph. Okay? Well, that's one way to think about it. Okay? Uh, it's, uh, a relative extrema is not the same thing as an absolute extrema. In fact, relative extrema, the word extrema means two things. It means minimum and it also means maximum. So when we say relative extrema, we're talking about two things. Relative minimums and relative maximums. And so I'm going to show you how to identify relative minimums and relative maximums using just a function, not a graph at all. Here's an example. Let's say that we have some function that does this. Okay, see that? I'm going to throw an extra shape in here over on the side. Let's say that it does this. Okay. And here's what I want to show you. This is a low point. It's not the lowest point because this area over here is even lower. So this is not an absolute minimum. However, it is a low point. It is a place where the graph stops decreasing and starts increasing. The graph is turning around. It's, stop, it's going to stop decreasing and start increasing. It's, making a, it's, it's reversing its direction is what it's doing. Similarly, right here, the graph is doing the same thing, except that it's increasing and then decreasing. It's reversing its direction. It's turning around. Then it turns around again here, and then it turns around again here. When the graph turns around from decreasing to increasing, when it is a low point in the graph, we call that a relative a relative minimum. The reason we call it a minimum is because it's a low point. And the reason we call it relative is because relative to the other numbers directly around it, which means sometimes we use the word local. So locally, round here, it's a low point. But compared to way over there, it's not a low point. This is the lowest point in the neighborhood. So it's a local minimum, which we also call a relative minimum. Up here, that's a high point, relatively speaking. Relatively speaking, it's a high point. But compared to all the way over here, if this graph keeps going up and up and up in the back, you know, coming from up here, these values are higher than this value. But round here, locally, Locally, it's a maximum. Relatively speaking, relative to all the values around it, it is a relative maximum or a local maximum. It's simply a place where the graph stops increasing and starts decreasing. The slope changes from positive slope to negative slope, where a, where a local minimum or a relative minimum is where the slope stops being the slope here is negative, less than zero. But then over here, the slope is greater than zero. So the slope changes from negative to positive and creates a low point just in that local area. That's a relative minimum. So relative maximum, relative minimum, relative maximum. Now over here, on a, uh, what you're going to see is that there are situations where the the uh, graph can go from having a negative slope and then have a zero slope and then a negative slope again. 
This is neither a maximum nor a minimum, but it is a place where the slope is equal to zero. And the reason I bring that up is because if you go back to these local minimums and maximums, you'll see what's interesting about them is the slope of the line tangent to the graph is zero. So those are places on the graph where the slope is equal to zero. That's the first thing I'm going to write down for you, is that a relative extrema is a point on the on a, the, a point on a function where the slope is equal to zero. Slope is equal to zero. Okay? And that's important because we're going to use sign charts where there are zeros to try and identify the relative minimums and maximums. Okay? All right, so now let's move on now to intervals of increase and decrease. Well, what is an interval? An interval is a range of numbers, or in this case, a domain of numbers. When we talk about an interval of increase for a function, we're talking about x values. We'll say something like, starting at 4 and ending at 9. And I don't, I don't want you to confuse this with a point. This is not a point on the graph. This is interval notation from 4 up until 9. Another way to write an interval is we can say 4 is less than x, which is less than 9. But we wouldn't read it that way. We would say x, all x values, starting at 4 and going up to 9, or all x values between 4 and 9. This is another way of writing an interval. Okay, And so what we're looking for here is intervals over which the graph is either increasing or decreasing. Well, what does increasing mean? Increasing, if you remember from the last video, increase means to have a positive slope. That mean, that's what increasing means. Slope is positive. Decreasing, an interval of decrease, or to decrease, means to have a negative slope. And here's what I want to show you. Now what we understand is that there are places where a function has a slope of zero, places where a function has a, a positive slope, and places where a function has a negative slope. And I want to remind you that sign charts only identify three things about a function. Sign charts identify where a function equals zero, where a function is positive, and where a function is negative. And that's exactly what we're going to use a sign chart for, is a sign chart is going to be used to identify where on a function, where its slope is zero, where its slope is positive, and where its slope is negative but we have to have a function that represents the slope enabled in order to pull this off. Can you think of, in calculus, have we learned about functions that represent the slope of another function? I hope that you thought of the derivative, because that's exactly what a, a derivative is, is. It is a function that represents the slope of the function that it came from. And so we are going to use the sign chart of the derivative to determine whether a function is increasing or decreasing and where it has a relative minimum and where it has a relative maximum. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put a function on the board and then we're going to make a sign chart out of it and we're going to answer uh, four very important questions. All right, before we create a sign chart and do an example, there's one more thing that I want to talk about. 
And that's because you might not have heard of this before. If you haven't heard about this, if you haven't already learned what a critical value is, now's a good time to think about it. I'm going to give you a definition for critical value. Very simply, there's more to it than what I'm going to give you, but very simply speaking, critical values are of uh, the critical values of a function. Okay? Critical values of a function are the zeros of the derivative. Okay, that's the first part. So for now, now some of you, this may be all that matters. There's actually another, there's something else uh, that represents a critical value on a function, but we'll start with this. The critical values of a function are very simply, basically just the zeros of the derivative. So if you find the derivative of a function and then find all the zeros of the derivative of the function, you have identified all the critical values of that function, that's it. Except that there's one more kind of thing that represents a critical value on a function. Critical values of a function are the zeros of the derivative and, and as well as meaning with the zeros of the derivative and all x values where the function is not continuous. So if you have any vertical asymptotes, if you have any holes, if you have any jumps, those would all, the, the x values where those things are occurring are also critical values of the function. So critical values are made up of the zeros of the derivative and all the points of discontinuity of a function. Okay? Now that you understand what a critical value is, we can go ahead and, uh, and answer some questions about a function. All right, here's what we got. It says for the given function, and there's the given function, g of x. It's a cubic function over there. It says, identify the critical values and identify each one, each of the critical values, as a relative maximum, a relative minimum, or neither. Then, identify all intervals of increase and decrease. Now, this is an e a pretty easy one to work on. And so I'm starting with an easy one so that I can explain things to you as we go. But in order to do this whole procedure, here's what you need to do. You need to create a sign chart. So here's what I would do if I were you. Right now, uh, I'm sorry, we don't want to create a sign chart yet. I forgot. First, we need to find the derivative and then create a sign chart. So what you're going to do is the very first thing you have to do to be able to answer these questions. Step one is identify the derivative. Then, to make a sign chart of the derivative. So what I want you to do is, I want you to take your TI-84 calculator. You can also use Desmos to do this, but take a TI-84 calculator. Step one, identify the derivative of g of x. Then step two, make a sign chart of the derivative. Go ahead and pause the video and try to do that now. All right, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to, you were able to do what I'm about to do now. First thing I need is the derivative. I need g prime of x, which is going to be 3x squared minus 10x minus 1. Now that I have the derivative, I can make a sign chart out of it. So I'm going to get my TI-84 calculator. I'm going to key in the derivative, not the original function. I don't want a sign chart of the original function. I want a sign chart of the derivative. So I'm going to key in 3x squared minus 10x minus 1. Then I'm going to hit graph, and I get a parabola. Looks like that. And I'm going to go ahead and create a sign chart. There are two zeros. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line. And I'm going to identify the zeros. The first one looks like it's really close to zero here, but it's probably not. I'm going to hit second calc or second trace, which gives me the calculate menu. Option two. Left bound looks like uh, left of that zero is about negative one. 
right bound, I would say it's probably positive one is right of that zero. Then I press enter and I get negative 0 0.09716675. So I'm going to put, put a hash mark here. I'm going to put negative 0 0.09, let's just go uh, 0 0.0972. Let's go to four decimal places on this. Then I'm going to find the second zero, which is over here. Looks like it's between three and four. So I'm going to hit second trace, option two, left bound three, right bound four, press enter, and I get 3.4305. So 3.4305. And now if I trace the values in between, if I hit trace, number smaller than this, let's say is negative two, I get a, a positive value, positive 31, so that means all the values are positive. Between negative uh, 0.09 and 3.43 is zero, so I'm going to trace zero. That output value is negative one, so all the values between here are negative. And then a number larger than 3.4 is four. I'm going to trace four and I get a positive seven. So all the values beyond 3.4 are positive. And so here's my sign chart. Now that I have a sign chart, now I can interpret the sign chart. Let's talk about this sign chart and what it means. This is a sign chart of g prime of x, which is the derivative of g of x. And I want to remind you that the derivative of a function tells you about the slope of the function. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at where g of x has a slope that is positive, where g of x has a slope that is negative, and where g of x has a slope of zero. What this sign chart says, what this sign chart of the derivative of g of x says, is that g of x has a slope of zero, slope of zero, slope equals zero at negative 0.0972. And the places where a slope, or excuse me, the places where a function has a slope of zero, which is the places where the derivative is equal to zero, well, those are the critical values of the function. This function has two critical values. Here, this is a critical value, and this is also a critical value. And the places where the slope is equal to zero can either be a maximum, a relative maximum, a relative minimum, or it's a place where it's neither a relative maximum or a relative minimum. For example, if we have a negative slope, then a zero slope, then negative slope, or if we have a positive slope, then a zero slope, then a positive slope. Slope equals zero, slope equals zero, slope equals zero, slope equals zero. Which is why the question says, Identify each critical value as either a relative maximum, a relative minimum, or neither. These are examples of neither. Okay? And here's what I want to show you. When we read this sign chart, here's how you read it. The function g of x has positive slope from negative infinity leading up to negative 0.0972. Then between negative 0.0972 and 3.4305, because the derivative has a negative value, the slope of g of x is negative. And that means decreasing. Doesn't decreasing mean to have a negative slope? Derivative means slope. Negative means negative, negative derivative, negative slope, negative slope means decreasing. Similarly, positive slope, positive derivative means positive slope, and doesn't positive slope mean increasing? And over here, positive slope, that also means increasing. And what that means is that the original function, g of x, is increasing from negative infinity up until negative 0 point, or 0 
that the function g of x is decreasing from negative 0 0.0972 up until 3.4305. And then this positive derivative means that the original function g of x is increasing from 3.4305 up through infinity. I'll put negative infinity over here. Okay. So we've this very clearly spells out for us our intervals of increase and decrease. In fact, we can go ahead and write them out now. One interval of increase starts at negative infinity and goes up to negative 0 0.0972. So I'm going to put interval of increase, negative infinity, up to negative 0 0.0972. Union. There's another interval of increase over here from 3.4305. up to positive infinity, up to infinity. So that's the, we have two intervals of increase. Then there's only one interval of decrease. G of x is decreasing starting at negative 0 0.0972 and going all the way up until 3.4305. So interval of decrease, negative 0 0.0972, up to 3.4305. So we're done with part b. We've identified the intervals of increase and decrease. And now, all we have to do is identify whether each one of these critical values, there's two of them, are these critical values relative minimums, relative maximums, or are they neither? Okay, well, here's what we have to think about. What does it mean when at a point, leading up to the point, Leading up to a point, the slope is positive. The graph is increasing, then it has a slope of zero, then it's decreasing. Increasing, then a slope of zero, then decreasing. What does that look like to you? Does that look like a maximum or a minimum? That's right, it's a maximum. It's a relative maximum. Relative maximum. And what does it mean when a function is decreasing, then has a slope of zero, and then it's increasing? Decreasing, then a slope of zero, then increasing. What does that look like to you? Relative minimum or a relative maximum? Or neither. That's a relative minimum. And so here's our rule. Wherever the, wherever the sign chart changes from positive to negative, the sign chart of the derivative, wherever it changes from positive to negative, that indicates a relative maximum on the original function. And wherever the sign chart changes from negative to positive, that indicates a relative minimum on the original function. And so this allows us to identify, answer this question, identify the critical values, and identify each as a relative minimum, relative, uh, or relative maximum, relative minimum, or neither. Okay? And I'll show you an example of a neither in just a few minutes. Okay? But here's what we have, is that there is a relative maximum at x equals negative 0.0972, and there is a relative minimum at x equals 3.4305. And that's it for this function. We've just identified all the important information about this function. Let me go ahead and uh, give me just a minute and I'm going to put the uh, steps for, um, I'll, I'll put the steps for how you can, after you make the sign chart, how to interpret the sign chart as intervals of increase and decrease and how to identify uh, relative maximums, relative minimums, and neither. All right, so if you want to write this down in your notes, here, here is how you interpret a sign chart. So once you've made the sign chart of the derivative, all the zeros that you've marked on the sign chart, those are the critical values. If the zero is a place where the sign chart goes from positive to negative, that is a relative maximum because the graph is going from increasing to decreasing increasing to decreasing. That's a maximum. If that critical value is a place where the sign chart changes from negative to positive, that's a relative minimum because the original function is going from decreasing 
to increasing negative slope to positive slope. That's a relative minimum. Anything else is a neither. For example, if, you, if the sign chart goes from negative to negative, then that means that it was negative slope, zero slope, negative slope. That's not a relative minimum or a relative maximum. If the sign chart goes from positive to positive, that means that the original graph is increasing, then has a graph or has a slope of zero, then it's increasing again. Increasing, zero, increasing, right? And so then that also is not a relative minimum or a relative maximum. All right, now moving on. Any place where the sign chart has a, has a plus sign, all the intervals where there's a plus sign, those are intervals of increase because, they have, because the original function has a positive slope. And any interval where you have a negative, those intervals are intervals of decrease. Those are places where the original function has a negative slope. So this is how you interpret a sign chart. What I want to do now is I just want to make an arbitrary sign chart and see if we can interpret it. It doesn't really matter, it doesn't really matter uh, what the original function is, let's erase this, but using a sign chart, just some arbitrary sign chart that I'm going to make up, we're going to identify all this information. So let's say that our sign chart, let's say it's the function h of x, and so this is the sign chart of h prime of x, the derivative. Let's say that it has five zeros. There's a zero at negative 12, there's a zero at negative 3, there's a zero at 5, a zero at 9, and then a zero at uh, 17. Okay? So you have five zeros here. And let's say leading from negative infinity and leading up to negative 12, let's say that the, uh, that the derivative has a positive value, then a negative value, then a negative value, then a positive value, then a negative value, and then a positive value. So here's a sign chart for h prime of x. It doesn't really matter what the function is. I could make a function just like this. I'm not going to because it's just going to result in us having a sign chart, which we now have. So now, given this information, we can identify how many critical values are there. Well, there's five critical values. All the zeros are critical values, the zeros of the derivative. So there's a critical value at negative 12, negative 3, 5, 9, and 17. Well, that was easy. Now let's identify the five critical values. Is each one a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither? Well, see if you can figure it out. Pause the video and see if you can figure it out. Use these right here. Use these rules right here and identify whether each one of these is a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither. Pause the video. All right, so look at this. Where the derivative goes from positive to negative, that means the original function goes from increasing to decreasing, increasing to decreasing. That's a relative maximum, relative maximum. Here, this negative 3, this is a place where the graph goes, the original function, h of x, goes from decreasing to decreasing. That's decreasing, 0, decreasing. That's not a relative minimum or a relative maximum. So we're going to call that a neither. That's a neither. That's supposed to be an n right there. Sorry about that. That's an n. Neither. At 5, at x equals 5, the original function h of x goes from decreasing to increasing. Decreasing to increasing. That's a relative minimum. Let's just put min there. At 9, h of x goes from having a positive slope to a negative slope. Positive slope to a negative slope? Well, that's a maximum. And lastly, this point at 17, the original function goes from having a negative slope to a positive slope, and then that is a minimum. So negative 12 is a relative maximum. Negative 3 is neither. x equals 5 is a relative minimum. x equals 9 is a relative maximum. And x equals 17 is a relative minimum. That was easy enough. All right, now let's identify our intervals of increase and our intervals of decrease. Increasing, well, h of x is increasing wherever the sign chart has a plus. So we've got one, two, three intervals of increase. This first one starts at negative infinity. So we're going to say from negative infinity up to, and I'm going to use this kind of notation here, when x is between negative infinity and up to negative 12. The next interval goes from 5 to 9. So we're going to say starting at 5 and up to 9. And the last one starts at 17 and goes up to positive infinity. So 17 up to 
positive infinity. These are our three intervals of increase. All right, so then where's the function decreasing? All right, we see three negative signs. One, two, three. So there's three intervals of decrease. Now, you may be tempted to identify negative 12 up to 5 as an interval of decrease, but it is not because this function, h of x, is not decreasing at negative 3. It has a slope of 0. So we're going to separate them into two separate intervals. We're going to go from negative 12 up to negative 3. And let's use the other form. Let's use interval notation with the, with the parentheses. So decreasing, starting at negative 12, up to negative 3. Then from negative 3 up to 5, negative 3 up to 5. And then from 9 up to 17, the derivative is negative. So from, not, uh, excuse me, 9 up to 17. 9 up to 17. There we go. There's our three intervals of decrease. That was easy enough. You should uh, be able to just take an arbitrary sign chart of a derivative and be able to identify the relative minimums, relative maximums, the intervals of increase, intervals of decrease. Okay? Uh, once you know how to do that, then you can start really understanding without even having a graph. Just take a function and you can identify the important qualities about that graph. This is all I have for you. Uh, uh, take the worksheet that I gave you and try and uh, do the best you can with it. Create the sign chart, then identify intervals of increase, relative minimums, relative maximums, and you should be good to go.